Good morning, I'm Brianna Pitts. Today's top story, the Education Commissioner has set the timeline to determine when hybrid and remote models of learning will no longer count towards meeting the required student learning time. Beginning with elementary school students, grades K through five, they must be back to full time in person learning five days a week by Monday, April 5th. Middle school students, grades six through eight, must be back in school full time by Wednesday, April 28th. And a specific date has not yet been made for high school students to return full time, but the commissioner says the timing should be announced in April and it will give districts a two weeks notice. Now families will still have the option to have their child learn remotely until the end of the school year and school districts can also apply for a waiver, but the commissioner says not many will be granted. Commissioner Riley joins us now right here on CBSN Boston. Commissioner, we thank you for your time with us this morning. Uh, it was only two weeks ago that the districts learned that this was the timeline that the state was looking at, but they do need to survey parents and they need to figure out the new procedures in less than a month. So why do you feel that this was a fair amount of time for them to plan? And a lot of people are also wondering, could rushing this process be dangerous? Good morning. So remember, uh, we were the only state in the country at the beginning of the school year uh, to provide administrators and teachers with 10 days of training. And we asked them to plan for all three models. So in-person, remote, and hybrid. So they already have kind of the skeletal outlines of uh, a plan. We think a month is more than enough time uh, to get people ready to move back to school. Some of the public schools, particularly in our urban districts, were already overcrowded before the pandemic crisis began. So how is the state going to be helping them address the spacing issues there? Well, uh, there are many urban schools at this point who are in remote learning, and we said that it is likely that we would approve a waiver for them to start off in hybrid learning first, so their class sizes would be cut in half. Uh, and so that's probably the way that we will do that. Okay, so they'll start off as hybrid in the beginning. Yes, for those urban systems that are currently remote. What happens in this scenario if there's a case in the school, a positive case? Will the school then be able to use remote learning in those situations or will a kid be forced to maybe miss class time if they're exposed or they test positive? Will there be uh, an exception made, in other words? I'm not sure it's an exception. I mean, learning will continue. We will, you know, do contact tracing, isolate whatever kids uh, need to be home on quarantine, continue to provide them an education remotely uh, while the rest of the school continues on. Will teachers be required to teach in person and remote classes simultaneously for uh, the students and the families who do choose to stay home and continue with remote learning? It's a district by district decision. Uh, we do recommend live streaming uh, just because it cuts down on um, personnel matters and staffing issues, uh, but it will be a district decision. What was uh, the criteria or what is rather the criteria that you'll be monitoring to make the decision on high school students returning? Uh, and another question, do you think it's worth bringing them back full time if there's only a, a month or so left in the school year at that point? You know, we think that any amount of time is precious for our kids to be back in school. We've seen the damage that's been caused by our kids out of school, particularly kind of for, on their social emotional health. So if we can get kids back, we want to do that. At the same time, we want to be um, really thoughtful in our approach, which is why we've chosen to phase in the models, starting with elementary school and then later with middle school. And then we'll make a determination on high school later in April. So the criteria is just based on how things go in those first two groups and then basing the decision for high schoolers after that. Yeah, I mean, I think we look at all uh, data points as we move forward and uh, we just need to get the ball rolling right now. Do you anticipate that a lot of districts will apply for the waivers in order to continue the hybrid or remote learning? Uh, and what is the likelihood of those waivers being approved? Is there a, a limited amount of them that are going to be approved? So I'm not sure I anticipate a lot. Uh, you have to remember that many school districts right now have begun the process long before the state said that you have to bring kids back of bringing back their elementary schools. Uh, and so many schools will already be full in person in elementary before April 5th. Um, you know, we will work with those districts um, that may have logistical struggles uh, to help them get in full time. And then we'll look at waivers after that to see um, what is feasible and not. 
as you know, we're one year into this remote learning hybrid situation. So what do you want students, families, teachers to know about returning to the classroom? What is your message to them? You know, I think we've seen this light at the end of the tunnel. The virus numbers are way down at the same time the vaccinations are going up. We've proven over the years with our safety protocols that we can have schools safely. And no less than Dr. Fauci himself thought our plan was both practical and realistic. Okay, Commissioner Riley, thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me.